What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gem Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, um, what can we say, Brian, to... It's just I, I just have to keep reminding everyone that the stuff that we talk about, usually, again, Brian, we're always in the ballpark, right on. And this is no different. James Gunn. As you all know, is along with Peter Saffron are the the co-heads of the DCU studios, correct? And Brian, you and I had a conversation. I actually went back to uh, listen to that conversation that we had regarding the the all the cooks in the kitchen, and that we don't know who's really calling the shots. And Brian. We're starting to see the power struggle. There's been rumors that Mr. Rock and Mr. Gunn and Saffron are bumping heads as to where perhaps they want to go with the Superman franchise. Brian, we talked about this. And now it's rearing his head. Where, Brian, do you see this ending up? I tend to believe The Rock is not going to get his way this time. What are your thoughts? I agree. And I think the name you haven't said yet, but it really this really is a part two. It's kind of a part three. There's like a part two to both our Gun Saffron pod, but also our WTF Henry Cavill Superman pod. We haven't mentioned Henry Cavill. Yeah. He looks caught in the middle to me, which wouldn't be the first time Yeah, when it comes to him in the Superman cape and being caught in the middle of something, but yeah. he does seem caught in the middle here. And I think that's a subplot. So what what do we have? What, 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 what little morsels are out there that are public domain and then kind of lead to the rumor mill? Okay, so first off, we are already seeing the James Gunn effect in a positive way for DC on social media. He's active, he's engaging with fans, he's dropping nuggets, he's keeping the conversation live around the DCU. That's good for DC. That was one of the points we made about where James Gunn could elevate this universe relative to the prior regime. Like Walter Hamada, not a guy who ever went on social media and talked to fans, right? Did a couple of red carpet interviews and stayed in the background. So Gunn is out there. Yeah. But when you're out there, people scrutinize everything you say or don't say, everything you do or don't do. So people have taken note of the fact that in James Gunn's social media postings, he did not acknowledge the Black Adam franchise while acknowledging a lot of other pieces of DCIP. Yeah. It was also then noted that Dwayne Johnson has never acknowledged James Gunn's arrival as the head of the co-head of DC studio. Mm -hmm. Which is also conspicuous considering considering that Dwayne Johnson has given us a lot of rhetoric about the hierarchy of power in the DC universe and about Henry Cavill's the controversy around Henry Cavill's return. So this guy has been very active about all things DC. So it is conspicuous that neither of them has acknowledged each other yeah. at any point in this process. That has led to the rumblings that it I mean, it it feels straight out of WWE 20 years ago, right? It's as we speculate, we literally speculated the WTF show. It felt like the Henry Cavill situation was a proxy for Dwayne Johnson in one corner and Camp Rock and Seven Bucks Productions and all his people, which is a lot. That's a lot of power and a lot of people up against these new heads of DC and where James Gunn and Peter Saffron are trying to re-roadmap the DCU. And they're kind of going at it under David Zaslav's watch with no definitive resolution yet. But I am with you. It does appear like, contrary to Black Adam's assertion, the hierarchy of power is actually tilting away from Dwayne Johnson in this case. James Gunn doesn't have to acknowledge him. He has the job. He is, and Peter Saffron are the heads of DC Studios. Dwayne The Rock Johnson is not. 
like you said, he's using the court of public opinion to push through that barrier, to force people's hands, sort of like release the Snyder Cut situation almost. I'm struggling to understand the thought that super that the Henry Cavill Superman is the best Superman. That is up for debate. I don't see a future in his Superman. Hence, we haven't gotten any word as to him signing the dotted line and confirming that he is the actual guy. There's a lot of obviously there's a lot of uh back and forth going on there. But Brian, to me, I, I, I've said it before and I'm gonna say it again. I think we need to move on. I think we need to move on. And to you, and again, going back to to the James Gunn versus The Rock, James Gunn don't need to say nothing about The Rock or, or even address that because he ain't the, the man in charge. You know what I'm saying? So, so we mentioned that James Gunn and Dwayne Johnson have yet to acknowledge each other in this capacity. But you know who did acknowledge James Gunn's arrival as the head of DC? Hmm. Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill put out a statement, look, saying. Basically extolling the virtues and the genius of James Gunn and saying how much he was looking forward to sitting down with him and talking about the vision for Superman. I think there's a little bit of Henry Cavill hedging his bet and being and being like, I don't think I'm all in on Camp Rock here. Of course. I need this part more than I need this friendship. Yeah. Like Dwayne Johnson's career and his star power go on. Right, whether or not he remains Black Adam, he's always going to have his red notices. His he, he's the guy's a money. Whatever we say about him, by and large, he has been a money maker. Now he has failed as a money maker in the superhero genre twice. If you count Super Pets, which is hard Black to Adam. do, hard to do. So maybe that's his eternium, the genre he can't do it. But like Henry Cavill doesn't have the machine that The Rock has around him as a career, right? He ditched The Witcher, which was his most consistent acclaimed role to date. And it sounds like he's out of the James Bond sweepstakes because he's- Which is old. a shame. But he's he sounds because old? he's too old. That's what they said. Okay. And Aaron, by the way, we had a whole other thing, but Aaron Taylor Johnson, who's, who's the hot name now, he's 32. And they said they want someone in their early 30s. And Henry Cavill's 39 going on. Yeah. So the point is, the windows for Henry Cavill to be an A-lister with an A-list role, it's not a lot for him right now. He needs Superman and he needs it to work, which means he has more incentive to play ball with what James Gunn is shopping than what Dwayne Johnson does. There's no question. Oh, yeah, Even yeah. Henry and you can... Cavill's represented by Danny Garcia. He can't let this part go to someone else. Brian, you alluded to this in our previous conversation relationships are gonna uh fall by the wayside of this situation um and somebody's gonna pick a side and right now the only side that makes sense is james gunn because he's the guy <laughs> and that's the you know and the irony is like you know we could sit you know if we're being fair about box office receipts in the dc universe look i mean the suicide squad was a was a commercial failure now and we, you and I agree, it wasn't just because of the pandemic. That that movie, it's not like that movie was an eight hundred million dollar movie that got knocked down by the pandemic. That movie was not received by audiences the way it was by critics. Critics, yes, yes. Peacemaker was a hit, but Suicide Squad was not. But as you said, that doesn't really matter because James Gunn has the job. He's not auditioning. He got the job in spite of that. So that box office failure is not really hanging on him right now. Yeah. Whereas for Dwayne Johnson, James Gunn is now, what we hear, James Gunn and Peter Saffron are in control of whether there's a Black Adam 2. And Dwayne Johnson doesn't like that, especially when Dwayne, Black Adam 1 is looking at maybe a $100 million loss. We might find that in the next Warner Brothers earnings call. Like this thing is not going to reach $400 million global. And if it's $200 million budget, $100 million marketing, you, know, you can do the math, $400 million global, the theater gets half of that, you know, they, they're losing a hundred million bucks on this movie. And I got to throw this in there because it's such a, it's such a thing, but 
it would be the most karmic outcome of this. So Dwayne Johnson has really tried to deviate from the comics as it pertains to Black Adam in one respect, which is he has disowned Shazam in all possible ways, despite the comics really linking those two characters of above all else. All right, but I've been saying this for well, how long have I been saying is that Brian, and when it comes to his business, the, the 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 rock business is all about the rock. So he's he's disowned Shazam as basically kind of small potatoes, babe, right? Yeah. It's the, it's the minor leaks for for him, even though in the comics, obviously those two are arch rivals and have so many great stories. So we're getting we've gotten a few more articles recently about like how much the rock dis has disdain for the Shazam franchise. Small detail. Who's the lead producer on the Shazam franchise? Oh, that's right. It's Peter Saffron. Oh, and by the way, Shazam, as much as we might say it really kind of came and went, that movie made money. <laughs> so the dude who is the lead producer on the movie that The Rock said I'm too big for is yeah. now the other guy who in theory holds the control over whether the Black Adam franchise proceeds. It would be the most karmic outcome if Black Adam's franchise dies on the vine because he yeah. spurned Shazam. And remember, Black Adam was supposed to be introduced in the cut scene of Shazam and Dwayne Johnson said, no, we can't do that. I'm making you take me out of the movie. And Saffron comes, you think Saffron hasn't forgotten that? And now he has, he has a chance to basically cut this thing off at the knees and pull a power move on one of the biggest stars in the world? Yeah. I think it's an uphill battle for The Rock right now. And that's rare in his career. Yeah. 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 I, I, I think he's going to have to take an L and figure out a way how he's going to go about um, expressing himself towards uh, DC and what they want to do. I'm pretty sure he's going to keep it positive. Really? He but, like scorched earth on the Cavill situation, inexcusably not bringing him back. I mean, he's kind of amping the rhetoric up against the studio. But to from the prior regime, I believe. I don't think he's necessarily now. Because uh, he went around Hamada, right? You said that. Yeah, no, 100%. But why Why even bring that up? I mean, he he is... I guess my point is that he has he has crafted a narrative that says... I prevented Black Adam from being in Shazam and I should get credit for that because it deserved better. I was the one who brought Henry Cavill back and I should get credit for that. But in return, I expect to be the centerpiece of the DC universe. And what we're reading and hearing, which makes a ton of sense to people like you and me, is James Gunn's like, no, like we, we love Black, he probably is saying like, we love Black Adam the character, you're not the fulcrum on which the entire universe is going to hinge. That's, so you, that's... Want, you want to be part of the universe, great. But you're going to be part of the universe. You aren't going to be the universe. And The Rock's never, never lived with that. Witness the Fast and Furious franchise, where he was a phenomenal part of it, and he couldn't live with it. That's why that's what Tyrese was like, no, don't do this, yo. Yeah. Let's keep it what we let's keep doing what we've been doing together. As a but team. Not, yeah. But the rock was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> yo, that is literally what just happened. It's In happened a nutshell. Again. It's it's again. He's, well, he skipped the going into a Shazam movie. He said, forget that. I'm doing my own jump. Which is Come great. On. Which is great right up until the moment the movie loses a hundred million dollars. Like you're betting on yourself when you do something like that. And historically, that's been a good bet for The Rock, but it wasn't in this case. Now, getting back to Cavill for a second, because I think Cavill, we see he's caught in the middle. He's caught in a few things here. So he's caught between Camp Rock and Camp Gun. Because I do think one thing that did happen is like, so the, the Brazil Comic Con, which we're going to talk about more from a Marvel perspective in another show, mm -hmm. DC did put some poster work down there that had Henry Cavill on it. Uh, he was, he was, put, they, so they have his Superman, Aquaman, Black Adam in the center, 
I think you could probably find the image and add it in here. Uh, I think Gal Gadot's on there. I think Ezra Miller's on there. So they're still out there officially kind of promoting this idea that Henry Cavill can be Superman. I think the other thing they're running into, though, as Gunn and Saffron are laying this out, is there's been some public comments from uh, David Zaslav. I think he said specifically with regard to Batman. He was sort of like, we're not going to have four Batman walking around. And then Gunn doubled down on that and saying, like, everything is going to be interconnected. And then there's going to be, like, an isolated couple of exceptions. And I think Joker 2 is actually the one that he like explicitly said but matt reeves batverse was the other one that was understood yeah so i think cavill's caught in that too because i think that leads back to our thing with him which is even if we think there's a potentially great clark kent superman performance in him if your goal is to have one definitive superman across your universe that would probably lead you to someone younger just because you're going to need that person to be that character for 10 to 15 years. And if you're starting at age 40, you know, can Henry Cavill do this and look proper at age 52? I think that's yeah. where he's also kind of caught in the middle a little bit of, they may like him, they may want him back, but they're, they might be struggling with, all right, how do we build a decade? They said 10 year plan. How do you build a 10 year plan with a 50 year old Henry Cavill at the end of it. Is, is that a problem? It is, it is, uh, but it won't be a problem for Henry. If he says he can do it, I mean, he'll try to do it, but is that the, uh, listen again, I'm going, I, I don't mean to harp on it, but I just need to make, make sure, um, people understand where I'm coming from with regards to Henry Cavill. I don't understand what makes Henry Cavill the best superhero, the best Superman of our genre. Perhaps, yes, of, of of not of our genre, of our generation. Yeah, but, Brian, you and I agree there wasn't really much of a Clark Kent performance in there. Listen, Brian, the flying, the superpowers, the super speed, I don't care about that. I've seen it over and over again. You're not going to do anything to make him better. Go ahead. You were going to say something? Well, I was going to say... The effects and visuals of Superman are in the hands of the director. They're not, that's not, yeah. no matter who plays Superman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, what I'm saying is his powers don't make him Superman to me. But I think the problem too is like, like I said, you're betting on, if we're being fair, and I think people are honestly, to your point, not being fair, you're betting on the potential of Cavill, not on the body of work you've already seen. That's exactly. It. Exactly. You, 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 it, we're, we want to see Henry be the Superman that we think he can be, not the Superman that he has been. You, you know who, you know who agrees with you and with us? Who's that? Henry Cavill. Because <laughs> what has he said about Superman since he's commented on potentially on, on coming back to the role? He talked about. Superman will now be enormously joyful, which is directly telling you it's not going to be the way I played it before. So he's literally okay. telling you, if you thought what I did before was the best Superman, I'm not doing that again. Again, it goes back to, can he do it? Yeah, I think we think he can. But I mean, I said, can he do it for the next 10 years? Can he do it for the next 10 years? Can he do it as both Clark Kent and a Superman? I think it's the most underrated thing about Christopher Reeve's performance is that that guy could flip that switch from being bumbling and goofy under the glasses to all of a sudden right. being majestic and calming. And it's such an underrated piece of acting to be able to do that. Right. Remember when. He, I think he, um, Superman leaves Lois. He drops her off, right? This is the, the 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 night that she spent with Superman, flying around and almost fall. He had to save or whatever. He leaves. Clark comes in. Lois uh, goes to get her purse or whatever, make whatever, and he takes his glasses off. Then he rises and stands. Yeah. And then he's able to turn it back on and act like this different dude again. Two different people. Yeah. 
Is that the sort of performance that everybody's looking at? I don't know, Brian. I don't know if this has to be that drastic because they tried it in Superman Returns. It really didn't work out that well because it was almost a repeat of, you know, of what Christopher Reed did. That was the problem. That that movie was asking Brandon Routh to be Christopher Reed, and that's yeah. not fair to anybody. It, but I think what Christopher Reed was embodying, and this is my point, is you don't have to be Christopher Reed, but you do have to capture the essence of duality in this character. It can't be... I'm just going to put the glasses on and be the same guy. That doesn't work. That's not the essence of how he, I read him and the way he's shown. I mean, the animated series does the same thing. Like there is a contrast in the way you play that. And, you know, to an extent, like Cavill was, wasn't really asked to do that. Like, he was asked to be much more brooding and much yeah. more kind of, I don't know, introspective in Man of Steel. But, yeah. and he's telling you, he agrees that that's not the tact he would like to pursue with this character. So he's looking to do something different. I'm not saying you shouldn't get the opportunity. I just think where DC is struggling is we need, if we need this character to pull together Justice League franchises, team-ups, solo movies across 10 to 12 years, that's the question. That's the question. The reason why there's a lot of people involved in this situation is because they realize the potential of what Superman can be. He's the top dog. If you hit a home run with Superman, oh my God, Brian, we're on our way. The excitement is going to turn up. Yeah. They haven't been able to do that. They're trying to. I don't know if you can do it with Henry Cavill. You can sure try. Let's see. But is this a long thing? I think they should just treat this as a Elseworld thing and give him a storyline, a, a trilogy, a dope, and that's it. Put that, add that one to the list of other things. Joker, Batman, Superman, those guys deserve it because they have the richest history in the comics. You could pull so many things off from there. Do that. If you wanted to bring Ben Black, Ben back, do um, uh, Return of the Dark Knight, part one and part two. You have the Joker. You could give us that story the way it was meant to be told. <laughs> There's so many other, there's so many options, Brian, but the only way for me, Brian, the only way for me that I think Superman is successful, forget it. Yeah, they actually can, yeah, if they can make that look dope, fantastic. Is what makes him Superman is, it can't be his powers. That's not what makes him Superman. If they can do that and bring some sort of inspiration I remember it now, Brian. I was watching Superman too. Um, sorry. I've been away so long. I won't let you down again. <laughs> you know, it was a great another uh, before we move on. Another great piece of acting when he had the the, the kryptonite around his, his neck, and he's promising the girl yeah. that he's gonna go to save her. He had to think about it. Her, his, his, her, his, her, it's her mom. Her mom. The girl's in, mom. Hackensack. Hackensack, right? <laughs> and he's like. Oh, I promise. I promise. Struggling. You believe that performance, Brian. Yeah. And they got to get to that. And people are going to say whatever, you know, that we hate. And, yo, Henry Cavill looks fantastic as Superman. There's no question. If I would say that, I'd be hating. You can label me a hater if I said that. But I'm he looks great as Superman, but he hasn't captured the essence of Superman. And if they don't do that, if they go ahead with him, Brian, if they don't do that with him this time around, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a huge failure, Brian. I agree. I think if they do go forward with him and they say, okay, we're you know, and let, let's be fair, like age in Hollywood isn't everything, like you know. I mean, Hugh Jackman played Wolverine for how long? Now, granted, that's a character that ages and but is sort of immortal. But if they do that, I think what it does is it it will then become key to tell the right kinds of Superman stories, ones that are fitting for a Superman who is a little bit older, who's maybe in the prime of his powers. Um, I think it just they have to make the right choices with that. It's not impossible, but I think you if you start making stuff where it's like uh, um, like as an example. What they did with the R-Pats Batman, they could not do with Henry Cavill now, I don't think, right? That's 
Batman year two, finding his way, young Batman. Like, I think that time is past Cavill. Like that time was Man of Steel time when he was 31, 32 himself. Now I think he has to be brought in and think of stories where he's a little bit older. If you're going to flash back to his time in Smallville, I don't know if you de-age him. I don't know what you do, but you have to be consistent. Because I feel like with Superman, like if you're like, hey, I'm trying to portray a 20 something Superman and I'm 48. Like, I just don't, I, I don't think that's going to work. I don't think that's no. going to work. So he has to act and be written in a mature, you know, manner because that's the actor who's playing him. So I, but I think Henry Cavill is desperately going to try to make this work. And I, I'm telling you, the biggest thing I'm watching for is if he fires his agent, that, that, that will be like the ultimate sign that like, they basically oh, yeah. like, look, if you want this, you're going to do it our way. And that means we don't want anybody from that camp around you. Are you willing to do that? We'll find out. Henry Cavill is certainly leaning towards getting this done the right way. By being one happy family and not being at the top of the, the mountain, pointing fingers and telling people what to do. Against their will. <laughs> <laughs> let us know in the conversation below what you guys think about this whole situation james gunn versus the rock the rock i think who's gonna win this who's gonna win this it is the rock gonna have his way if we get an announcement confirmed announcement a confirmed and com confirmation doesn't come from the rock i'm sorry i'm uh, not on this one from warner brothers saying that a black adam 2 is coming if we don't get that anytime soon, I don't think it's happening. They're going to move forward. Henry Cavill's going to play ball. Let us know what you guys think is going to happen. Uh, we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report.